I'm a paper together with my, my co-authors Marcel, Aiden and Josiani. And um, we are actually proposing in this paper a, a very exciting and new uh, Sparkle execution framework approach, which we call hybrid Sparkle queries. And um, our use case is actually to query over dynamic data, over dynamic linked data in this case. And we could imagine queries like, uh, I want to have the latest updates of my friends on Facebook, Identica, MySpace, just name any of the social networks. Um, a more interesting query would be, for example, current temperatures of European capitals. So the data is available, everything is linked, but um, actually with uh, the current query approaches, we have problems to, to execute and answer these queries. So for example, one approach which is very traditional these days is um, we use a materialized cache. That means we pre-process all the data, we collect it beforehand, we index it, we optimize the, the index structure. We have very good query times. Um, but unfortunately, we might get outdated results because uh, yeah, maintaining this cache uh, is a very time-consuming process. And if the data is very frequently changing, uh, yeah, we cannot keep up with the change rate. Another approach, um, which pretty much came up in the last four or five years, um, exploits the fact that linked data, uh, of the linked data principles. That means uh, we have URIs, we can dereference the content, and we can actually execute the query over the retrieved data. So we, here we call it, um, we access the data at runtime, which guarantees us pretty much real-time query answering uh, in, in terms of resource accuracy, but uh, the query times are really uh, bad compared to materialized approaches because we have expensive HTTP lookups. Um, so but and what we propose now in our approach is to exploit the fact that uh, these query parts are static and dynamic. And with this, we refer to the, to the data behind it. So for example, European capitals is rather a very static fact. Uh, it doesn't really change <laughs> over, over time, over years. Whereas the current temperature is probably uh, changes in, in minutes or, or hours, so it's very dynamic. Uh, for our second query, um, friends on Facebook, one can argue they are dynamic. Other, for others, they are more static. But, uh, latest updates are actually very dynamic. So what we try to do is like, uh, we want to run the static parts over a materialized cache index, which gives us the query times, and the dynamic parts over the web directly, so which gives us the, the fresh results. And um, yeah, that's what we call hybrid sparkle querying. And uh, the idea is to, to exploit the strengths of both approaches and leverage them then in one engine. Um, as such, we propose the, the following architecture. So we have, again, our two, two extreme approaches. Uh, on the right side, the, the data warehousing, and on the left, uh, the dereferencing of documents. We have a Sparkle query. Um, we decided, for at the moment, for a mediator approach. So that's why we introduce interfaces to access, for example, any public uh, cache who offers a Sparkle interface. And we can use any of these uh, linked data query approaches uh, who, who accept Sparkle queries. So that's our idea. Um, the next component of this query engine is uh, what we refer to as a coherence monitor. So it allows us to detect and uh, store knowledge about the dynamicity of data for, for query patterns. So which is then used to actually decide which parts of the query are executed over the, the store or the cache and which are live. Uh, as such, yeah, we need a query planner who, who does all the work. Um, so yeah, the next part, I, we did some experiments for the coherence monitor. And um, uh, yeah, as I said, it's responsible to store the knowledge for the query processing. And uh, we identified two possible approaches to acquire this knowledge. Actually, one uh, is a cache-independent approach. That means um, we just collect a huge data set, and we monitor it over time and learn about change patterns. Uh, the other one would be cache-specific. That means we, we use one, one cache, one public endpoint, and we start to monitor how accurate, up-to-date this index is. Uh, both have advantages and disadvantages. The, the independent approach are very generic, so we can just plug in any endpoint or any cache. Um, but it involves a maintenance of a huge data set, and the cache-specific gives us more accurate statistics, but we are very sensible to cache-specific update strategies and uh, coverage uh, policies. Yeah. So what, what we did in, in this paper, we looked actually at cache-specific knowledge and how we can acquire it. 
And our methodology was we, we used two endpoints. One was the CINDJ Sparkle endpoint um, here in Derry. The other one was the Virtuoso uh, LOD cache, which hosts um, most of the linked open data sets and um, provides a Sparkle endpoint. What we did, we, we generated a, a set of queries. We run them against the endpoints. We collected the results. We run them against the web. Oh, sorry. And collected the results. And then by comparing the results with respect to, to what we get from the web, we can estimate how up to date, how coherent an index is. And um, yeah, that's what we, what we did in the next step. Um, so we decided to go for triple pattern estimates that. Uh, that means, yeah, for each triple pattern, we, we collect these statistics and we have a value which then gives us a, a measure of coherence for, for an endpoint on in store. And for this approach, we just center them around predicates. So that means we can only, we have only these statistics for triple patterns with a constant in the predicate position. Um, what we did for the experiment, we used the billion triple challenge data set. I guess that's for most of you know it. Yeah. Uh, we sampled 12,000 URIs based on, on from different domains and uh, uh, in, a, in a random way. And we used an entity query, which looks like this. It pretty much asks only for all information where entity appears in the subject position and in the object position. And uh, so we substituted this entity URI with the sampled URIs. And um, this allows us to, to have ingoing and outgoing uh, coherence measures. As I said, we run this against the endpoint. Uh, the query and against the web, and we compare the results, and um, and then look on the predicates, and we found like one, we found distinct predicates for the Cindy chain point with 1,500 predicates and two and a half thousand predicates for Virtuoso, so it's quite a, a good set of, of information. Um, as results, there are some details in the paper, and now I'll just uh, present the high level and the most important information. Um, the, the most important fact was actually that these stores are outdated. The data inside is only to a certain extent coherent what we can find on the web by if we execute, for example, the same query one time against the web and the other time against the store. For CINDJ, we found in, in this uh, experiment that for 70% of the, the predicates, uh, the results are not to 100% um, matching which, what, what we get from the web. Um, and for open link, it was a little bit better. We got like only for 30% of the predicates, the data was not to 100% uh, coherent with what we found on the web. So, which is already an indication that um, if we only use the store, we can expect that the results differ from the actual uh, results we get from the web. Um, we looked at the, the coherence um, estimates or, or measures per predicate. Uh, we found out that they vary across different endpoints or stores, which is an indication that we want to have cache-specific uh, statistics rather than cache-independent uh, ones. Um, clearly, they, they vary also across different data providers. Um, we, have, we could have data providers which are like social pages, which have more change volume than, for example, a private homepage or, or archive. Um, and yeah, with respect to, to the query processing, we all Okay. We also looked at the, the correlation between the selectivity, that's the number of resources for a pattern, and the coherence measure. And we couldn't find any correlation or only little, uh, which means um, yeah, we actually wanted to exploit the fact that uh, if, you know, in case there was a, would be a correlation, we could exploit it for the, for the query planning. But since there is none, we, uh, we are pretty much open for, for ideas and proposals, um, yeah, which I go in the next one and a half minutes. Um, query planning is traditionally responsible for reordering of a query, for, in our case, for the mediator approach, for splitting a query, for the delegation and the execution. Um, we looked at split types or how, to, how we can split a query. And one approach would be we split it multiple times. So we identify static patterns and dynamics, dynamic patterns, and we send the static ones to the, to the store and the dynamic one live. And this can be done iteratively and uh, yeah, in, in a multi-way. It requires a lot of coordination, um, a lot of synchronization between resources, and we should consider the politeness because we, we want to use public endpoints, and uh, if we ask too many queries at the same time or requests at the same time, we might overload them or have a yeah, yeah, 
denial of service attack. So the other approach would be a single split, which is more friendly, um, easier to execute, but more restrictive. So we just group patterns, static patterns and dynamic patterns, and then send them. Um, that brings us to, to the reordering strategy. So we can use um, a selectivity-based reordering strategy, which is used in, in traditional database uh, databases. Uh, they are optimized for query execution. Um, but in our case, since we also want to optimize for freshness, they, the selectivity ordering doesn't guarantee any freshness. So we have these, um, we have can have nested uh, query patterns of static and dynamic ones, and um, yeah, so we cannot guarantee freshness. So we also looked at coherence-based um, reordering, where we pretty much either push static pattern to the bottom of the query plan or or to the top. That's uh, still open to decide. And so we have then two groups of queries, and um, yeah, as the, the slide already suggests, so the selectivity base seems to favor more multi-split uh, strategies, and the coherence base is more for single-split strategy. As uh, such, the conclusion is um, in this short paper, we, we provide evidences that uh, static materialized approaches are partially out of date. Uh, we looked at coherence estimates. We found that they vary across different uh, stores. <coughs> but also data providers. Um, we propose the hybrid querying, uh, which maximizes freshness and minimizes the query time. Uh, so by combining the strength of both approaches, we looked at different split strategies and uh, different orderings. Um, future work, <laughs> we pretty much just scratched the, the surface of, of this area. I mean, you can imagine these different possibilities to combine approaches, configurations, and evaluate it. Um, one part which we didn't look into so far was the maintenance of these coherence estimates, which are important to have accurate statistics uh, for the query planning. What we did, we started to investigate different hybrid query plans. So we looked at these two different orderings. We looked, or we started to look in splitting and execution. And for that, I, yeah, I want to would like to refer to our upcoming ISWC paper, where we have some more results. Uh, in, in real-world queries over, over these two endpoints. And as such, I, I hope I could draw your attention for this interesting query approach. And I'm open for questions. So how we do it? Yeah. I, uh, for this, we have this, uh, this coherence monitor, and we had this experiment. So in a simple case, we, we run a query, and we run it against the web, for example, asking for friends of somebody, and we run the same query against the index. And then we get this. So you just compare the, the, the results that you have on the web and on exactly. the so we, and that's it. Yeah, we get these two result sets, and we compare the result sets from the index against the ones from the web. And then the ones who are not in the index but on the web gives us an indication are you using a kind of a threshold for, 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 for this comparison? Because you can have ah, yeah. a difference of only one value, let's say, that, that means uh, yeah, so more or less the data are, in it in that, in yeah. are, are static. Yeah, in, in the paper, we have the, the formula how we compete this, uh, this coherence measure. So one way would be just to count how many results we got in total and how many were not uh, overlapping or coherent, so which could then give us a value of 1 divided by 100, for example. And then for the query planning, for the splitting, we can use thresholds to decide uh, yeah, uh, from what, what point uh, we consider a pattern as static or dynamic. So. Any other question? No. Uh, oh. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, so you have the data set that you have to I'm not sure, I mean, I, I like this fresh versus fast, but uh, who wants fast which is not fresh? I mean, I, mean, I, I don't really get the pragmatic uh, of this work. I mean, in the sense that you must agree you want to get the right results, yeah? Yeah. And um, certainly getting fast results which are incorrect is no use of anybody. It's no use to anybody. <coughs> so, I, I can just, maybe you say at the beginning, and I missed that, 
Right, I don't really understand the overall rationale for, for the approach. So the, the rationale is like, if you want to have fast results at the moment, you have to actually go live and, and retrieve the, the sources at runtime to get the accurate results. Um, but that's a very slow operation because you have to do HTTP lookups and retrieve the content and process it. So what we s propose is to, to exploit the, the strengths of materialized index, which stores only the static data, because there's no need to access them live from the web because they don't change. And uh, so that's the main idea is to, to improve the, the live linked data query approaches, if that answers the question. Any other question? So that's thank you to speaker.